Hi folks, my name is Sophia Botha and welcome to my channel. And in a series of interviews with interesting people, I am today interviewing Jackie Walker, who is uh, an anti-racist campaigner who some people would describe as courted controversy for her stance um, in support of Palestinian justice. Um, but she's a good friend of mine and I will say at the outset of this interview that I am a Jew and I do not believe any of the accusations which have been leveled against her for, of anti-Semitism, otherwise I wouldn't have her on. So Jackie, do you want to explain who you are and what you do? Oh my God, uh, yeah, I would like to explain that. Wouldn't that be great if I knew that? Um, well, my background is, you know, I was trained as a teacher. I became an advisor teacher. I then became a freelance anti-racist equalities trainer. I traveled around Europe and other parts of the world and the UK. I developed materials on anti-racism and equalities. Um, I then um, wrote a book which sold for enough money to allow me to stop being a teacher. It wasn't huge amounts, but it was enough to pay off enough of my mortgage so that I wasn't having to do that anymore. And I've always been a political person. Um, I have stood for council, almost got in for the Labour Party. That was just before the kind of Blairite or the Blair years, but I've always been in one way politically active and I come from a very political family. Uh, my father was a Russian Jewish emigre to America who joined the Communist Party and he met my black Caribbean mother of Jewish descent in America when they were on the busing protests. So if you like, you know, that kind of po politics has not just formed me intellectually. I kind of feel like it's in my DNA. Yeah. Um, you and I have, have something in common. We both campaigned against apartheid. Yes. Um, because I'm, I'm South African. Um, and I, my family was in support, or in support of apartheid. Um, how do I explain it? Essentially, the, the bullshit which people were fed was uh, it, it was to, to counter the communist threat. Yeah. And the, the, what, the funny thing is, when I lived, uh, when I lived in South Africa, um, you never heard the word apartheid. It was always referred to as our system. I didn't really hear apartheid until I came to this, this country. And when I, when I started to learn about it, I thought, it doesn't make sense. Why Why are people being discriminated against on the basis of the colour of their skin? It just, it made no, no sense to me. And so I started protesting against it because I just thought it was evil. Now, I know that after the, uh, after we, you know, we, we successfully uh, had apartheid dismantled, although we should always, um, uh, state that though apartheid was uh, the racial apartheid was dismantled, there still in South Africa is an economic apartheid. Um, South Africa suffers from one of the largest uh, inequality gaps that there is in the world um, between rich and poor, and that is a consequence of apartheid. But after apartheid, uh, you got involved with. Uh, the campaign for uh, Palestinian justice. Um, I'll admit it's always been a, a bit difficult for me because I, I am a Jew and yeah, I was brought up to support Israel. Um, and I still believe that Jews should have a homeland. Um, we should be able to defend ourselves considering we're a very persecuted lot over many centuries. Um, and I do support there being a state of Israel, but Israel, I've always believed, needs to be able to treat its neighbors with respect and it does not do so. 
and the Palestinians are entitled to their own land. I've, you know, I, I'm, I'm one of these people who has supported the two-state solution. But if you look at a map now, the two-state solution is not viable due to Israeli land grabs, which are illegal, by the way, um, and also the building of that border wall. Um, and I say it's a border wall. It really is, it ostensibly is. I know they call it a security wall the, uh, or a security barrier because legalese, they can't call it a border wall, but that's essentially what it is. Um, they're, they're creating a, a, a Palestinian ghetto. And Gaza is the world's largest concentration camp. And I know people are going to accuse me of anti-Semitism for saying that, but, you know, that is ostensibly what it is. So I've, I've set out my story, you know, about, you know, I, I, I despair um, at the way the Israeli government treats uh, Palestinian people. Uh, and the 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 the, um, the comparisons to apartheid in South Africa are startling. For instance, I'll give you an example. In Israel, if a Jewish person is in hospital on a ward with a Palestinian, they can ask the Palestinian to be removed. I take it you remember the band Queen, don't you? Yeah. Right. Um, Queen played Sun City, which is sort of was was, was South Africa's science into Las Vegas during apartheid. Yeah. Um, and they were blacklisted for doing so, and rightfully so. Um, and Brian May, to this day, and even though now Brian May has supported Jeremy Corbyn, and you know, has seemed to become pr pretty. You know, right on lefty in his in his old age. To this day, he still defends Queen having played South, uh, Sun City during apartheid, and he always says, "Oh, well, we said we wouldn't play to segregated audiences." Okay, yeah, audiences in Sun City weren't segregated, but the law was that if white people didn't like black people being in the audience, they could ask the black people to, to leave, and they would have to because that was the law. Well, you know, one thing I'd like to say is that um, I think many of us, when we were younger, supported Israel. I mean, I remember, um, for example, I didn't do it. My partner did, who's also Jewish, um, considering going to kibbutz in the uh, in the 70s. I also remember contributing to a fund for planting trees. And I think many, or shall we say, I would actually say most people on the left, in the early days when Israel was founded, found a real sense of uh, kinship in the whole kibbutz system and had a kind of sympathy. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna go into this just too much, happy to, but you know, not, not for these purposes. I think what's happened is that the outrageous behavior of the Israeli regime has managed to alienate, um, and it's not just happening in England. Uh, look at the figures in America. There is absolutely no doubt that young people are moving away from support for Israel. And one of the reasons why we see uh, Israel advocacy in, in uh, certainly in England, but in America as well, becoming so harsh and vociferous is because they're scared. They know that their immoral actions in terms of what's happening with Palestinians and in Gaza uh, have, have appalled people and they can no longer keep wraps on it. Now, personally, I think a two-state system is, is shot and I have done for almost as long as I can. Well, it's not, physically, it's not geographically viable because as I've said, Certainly all not. the illegal settlements, if you look at it, if you look at an actual modern day map of, of, of the territory which, which Israel has, uh, uh, sorry, but the Israeli government has um, uh, basically annexed, that doesn't leave the Palestinians with, with a great deal in the West Bank. I can tell you that. This is nonsense. And they've, they've been playing a game and they've been get, playing a very knowing game, the Israeli government. And uh, some people have either willingly uh, because they know it's nonsense 
or through ignorance swallowed this line. I mean, it, it's very easy to look at historical documents going back 30 and 40 years, which show what the intent of the Israeli government was. And it was never a two-state solution. It was always the oppression of the Palestinians. Now, I, one, one thing I would say, um, I mean, I'm a socialist. I don't actually believe, I don't support nation states of whatever uh, kinds. And I think one of the problems is, particularly in terms of Israel, is I would have no problem one way or another founding a state which Jews could live in, but not when it's on land where other people, as a majority, are living. And I also think to have a Jewish state is really problematic. Because even in England, we don't have an English state. We have a state for its citizens. Every citizen is, you know, we might not feel like that, I'm saying this as a black person, but every citizen has the same legal rights. As you know, in Israel, 92%, uh, 95% of the land cannot be purchased by Palestinians. That is about having a Jewish state. So I, 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 I'm not kind of interested in the argument really very much about whether there should be an Israel state. Israel exists. You know, we can't, we can't say it shouldn't exist because it does exist. Yeah, this is, this, the, yeah, I, I, I kind of think that pragmatically, you, you know, Israel does, it, I mean, look, my, my, the other week I was going on a rant about Netanyahu on Twitter, and there is a, there's a really kind Jewish person, who, uh, 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 elderly Jewish man who I, who follows me, and he he, he said, look, I know, you, I know why you don't like Netanyahu, and, and I share the same, um, so, so, same misgivings about him, he is as corrupt as they come. And, um, but he pointed out, he said, look, what happens if there's a pogrom? Where are you going to go? You know, that's, that, that is, you know, I'm not, I'm, it's been a long time since there was a pogrom, but obviously in this country at least, but obviously we've, we've had the Holocaust and, you know, that, though it was 80 years ago, that's not, you know, that's, that's a blink of an eye when it comes to history. Um, so, you know, I I do feel that if I feel threatened because of my Jewish ethnicity, Israel is, is, is a safe harbour for me. Well, it may be a safe harbour for you or it may not. I mean, half of my relatives uh, live in Israel and, um, you know, Israel is a very dangerous place for Jews and it's a very insecure place Jews. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I have a lot of misgivings. I was going to go back to something you, you said earlier about the left supporting uh, is uh, originally supporting the, the, the foundation of the state of Israel. There's a reason for, for why the left did this because it was seen in those Zionism was seen as in those days as a movement of liberation and of throwing off the the yoke of colonialism because of remember written controlled Palestine Palestine yeah. was right. Yeah. It changed after the Six Day War yes. in 1967 because the left sort of reassessed things because Israel became, rather than a state of uh, about liberation, it became a, uh, another state which was um, occupying a territory which it wasn't theirs. And that goes against a lot what what do the, the, the left stand for. The, you know, we don't believe in 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 occupation and on and, and oppression yeah um and actually and what happened is israel became a colonizing state you know that's what it did to that's what it's done to the palestinians that's what it's done to palestinian land it well is I, i've gone as far as to say that um listen are you um <clears throat> uh, is committing ethnic cleansing in the west bank yeah, of course he that's, is. That, that is essentially what what he's doing, and you know I've I've said this modern you know the original tent of Zionism I fully support right, but 
and, and uh, you talk about kibbutz. I was actually conceived on the kibbutz. My father was in the IDF. Um, but the um, what Zionism has now become is decidedly fascistic. It is saying one set of people are superior to another. That's right. one sign of fascism. Yeah. Scapegoating minorities, well, for, for, for the ills of the nation. Well, you know, Palestinians are, are, are constantly being, you know, uh, and, and also, let's say, um, other Islamic states are, are, are also being um, accused of, of undermining Israel all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, any criticism of the Israeli government, right, is considered anti-Semitism. Well, that's bullshit. Is it racist to criticise the British government? No. Well, then, you know, that's a really stupid fucking argument. Yeah. Um, the, I, 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 and I'm glad that you brought something up. You, you've mentioned successive governments because that's the truth. Yeah. Look, Nezan Ayu is not a good person, right? And I do not like his, you know, what, what he has done at all, right? But he is a symptom of the problem. Exactly. But, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, I know that he's due to step down at the end of next year, right? But, like, the people who put him in power are still there. It's, it's, it's like the Trump argument. You know, Trump's gone, but the people who put him in power are still there. Exactly. Exactly. And that is the problem. I mean, what you have, exactly as you said, Sophia, is an apartheid system. It doesn't matter who the head of that is. You can't make it nice apartheid. You can't make apartheid nice. There is only one way for it, uh, Israel, as it is now structured, to go, and that is for it to become more and more reactionary. It has to. There is no other way for it to go. Um, so, I was going to say, um, one, the, one, one thing we both have in common is we're both former Labour Party members. <laughs> Now, you I left, was, though, didn't you? Sorry, you left. I left. Well, the thing is, Jackie's my friend, and one, one way I sort of uh, one way I sort of judge someone as, as a friend is if if they don't run away when I burst into tears on them. And I remember basically what happened was I wrote an article um, questioning. Uh, there was the Westminster bomb attack, just a uh, Westminster Bridge bomb attack, just before the 2017 general election. And I wrote an article questioning: Did the Tory government know anything about this before it happened? The, and, and there's not like an annex of conspiratorial bullshit. You know, it. There is evidence to say that governments do know about terrorist attacks before they happen and for whatever reason they let them happen right <laughs> so I, I was I, I wasn't saying that you know the Tories had had any prior knowledge I was just questioning whether they did right the next thing I know the day before the two th 2017 general election I got a letter saying I was suspended from the uh, from the Labour Party what Turned out that this article had offended somebody or other in, in, in the Labour Party, and they well they thought that it brought the party into disrepute. Um, and essentially, I was trying to get you know, you know, was my suspension going to be lifted, or you know, you know, was this going to go any further? And they were playing, they were buggering me around, and um, I. I just got really stressed because of it. And I also, you know, I'm a political commentator. I, I just felt I'm forever going to have to um, look over my shoulder to see yeah. if, if, if some, because you, you've got to remember the context here was this, this, this was when, well, there's, there is a civil war in the Labour Party um, raging, but this is when Blairites were looking for any excuse to get rid of any Corbyn supporter. Yeah. Because you remember there was, um, uh, there was somebody who tweeted they fucking loved the Foo Fighters, yeah. and the next thing they know, they were suspended for the Labour Party because they were a Jeremy Corbyn supporter. Yeah. Any excuse. Yeah. yeah and I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't do what I wanted to do without 
always having to look over my shoulder. And this was stressing me out. And I remember I rang Jackie and I, and I said, look, I, I think I'm going to have to leave. And I was in tears because the Labour Party doesn't mean something to me and Jeremy Corbyn means something to me. Um, funny enough, actually, six months after that, I, um, the Daily Mail um, monstered me. Um, basically because peace, I, I, I wrote something saying um, I am um, Antifa and I believe in defeating fascism by all necessary means, which is what Antifa believe in. And I include TERFs to be part of the fascist problem. Next thing I know, the Daily Mail is um, Corbyn, uh, uh, Corbyn trans ally um, support, um, uh, 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 endorses thumping feminists. What? <laughs> at that point, I was I that that was it. Yeah. Um, I I you know I knew that I was never going to be let back in the Labour Party. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're yeah. lucky. I mean, the Board of Deputies had me in their ten pledges me and Ken Livingston, that we should never be, never be readmitted for as long as we live. Yeah, but they're now, <laughs> yeah, they're now, trying, they're now trying that with Jeremy Corbyn. Oh dear, I mean, the whole thing is the most bizarre, well, to call it bizarre, it actually makes it too superficial. Because if you think this doesn't matter, what they're doing at the moment, to the left, to anti-Zionists, in, in particular to anti-Zionist Jews. If you don't think it matters, the bottom line is now they've realized that they can do it with the left, with the issue of Israel. They can pull this one out of the hat anytime they want to. That's what they will think. And that's what they are doing at the moment in terms of the way we think and the way we interpret um, what's happening and somebody um, there's been a bit of a kerfuffle to bet, uh, today about Koonsberg and her awful oh, reporting God. of the budget. You know, absolutely no she, critical faculties used in terms, sorry, of, she's, she's, in, in terms of a budget, which in, in, in relation to what it's going to do, apparently, not my figures, these are figures from a research organisation, something like a hundred thousand children will die because of it. Now they're not English children, but as far as I'm concerned, a hundred thousand children dying because of something that is being done in this country is just as bad as if I saw a hundred thousand children dying at the bottom of my road, but there is no critical faculties used. They are making voters into sheep. Well, I mean, the Tories have already killed over 100,000 disabled people with of welfare course. reform. Of course. And um, they've become bolder and bolder every time that they get away with it. And I'm, I'm, I'm scared at the moment because obviously the, 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 the Tories brought in their welfare reforms in, 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 as a consequence of the banking crisis of 2008. And rather than make their... Um, banking chums pay for their own reckless behaviour, it was disabled people who had to pay for it. And now we've had the whole COVID, the cost of the COVID pandemic. It's, um, well, who's going to pay for it? And the Tories are in government and you know who the Tories will always make pay for fuck ups. Yeah, well, so it'll be the, it's, the lowest, it's the poorest and the lowest paid. And if you think that that's just a coincidence, then, you know, have a look at the growing gap between rich and poor. All of this talk about relative poverty and then they get into their little complex equations. Forget that. Look at the gap, because as any statistician will tell you, any social scientist will tell you, what is important in terms of a country's sense of well-being, in terms of social cohesion, in terms of happiness is about the disparity between the wealthiest and the poorest. And ours has been going like that. And well, that's what, that's a political choice. And it's not a choice that's been made in some countries. If you look at the Scandinavian countries, they're different. So for example, the difference between what 
a director of a big company earns of one of his workers is actually not that much. In the UK, it is massive. It is absolutely massive. And while we're doing that, what will happen is that mental health will degenerate, physical health with the poor will degenerate, crime of all sorts will proliferate, and we will become an increasingly unhappy country. Yeah, I was uh, two things I would say uh, about that. First of all, the Tories always say, oh, the, the left are obsessed with class war. Well, the Tories are committing class war because it, um, they're, they're always trying to make out that it's always the poorest vulnerable, those on welfare, blah, 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 who, who are taking the piss, right? And it's not. It's those who, um, yeah, the, those, the, the wealthiest, those with the broadest shoulders should carry the heaviest way, as I think it was John um, Maynard King said. Um, and there, you know, when, when, when you have people like Amazon and whoever else tax dodging, the consequences are people die because, our, because the government can't fund the resources to help pe vulnerable people, okay? Yeah. But it's, a, thing. it's yeah, a trick yeah. that has been played, and it's a trick that's been played with the help of the Murdoch press. If, if any of your viewers want to really understand the importance of what's happened in terms of the alliance between Murdoch and the Blairites and the Conservatives, the BBC, it's up on iPlayer, have got um, a documentary about the rise of the Murdoch. Yeah, I've seen it. And it is totally utterly both informative and terrifying. Uh, the, the, the actual power of these people to uh, form uh, what's going to happen. Uh, and, and, and there's no, you know, because what we've got to understand is most people are not like me and Sophia or many of my friends and comrades. I would put us as sort of political nerds. You know, this is what we talk about over the dinner table. We spend yeah. a lot of time. We know who these people are. We know what they've said. We know what policies are coming out. Most people couldn't be asked with that. They have, they have other things to do. And when they get their information, they get their information from the BBC, which is now so deeply infiltrated. Oh, yeah. Hard carrying Tories and increasingly so, and a press, which is the most right-wing in the whole of Europe. And that's not me saying it. This is, you know, you know university research tells you that our media is the most right-wing in the whole of Europe. So if you're uh, Josephine Bloggs and you're finding out what's happening and you're relying on the um, BBC or the news or the newspapers, what you're getting now is pure propaganda. I have never known a time as bad as this. There's one thing I would say about these times, which is it has stripped bare. It's really stripped to the skeleton, the ruthlessness, red in tooth and claw, with which the establishment will treat both individuals and organizations who in any way actually undermine it, question it. And we've seen this, you know, 20 years or so after the police infiltrated left-wing groups, including sleeping with women and fathering children and getting information from them. That's just what we know about. That is just the kind of techniques we know. Well, well I was gonna, a couple, couple of things I was gonna say, first of all, about inequality. What happens when there's a huge gap between rich and poor? I'll tell you what happens, the storming of the Bastille. Well, with any luck. Well, the French, <laughs> that kind of the French Revolution was that nine tenths of the French population lived in abject poverty, while the 1%, uh, you know, essentially lived in absolute opulence. Absolutely. And when you have that huge gap, it you know, you lose social cohesion yes. and you have bloody revolution yeah. yet again. The Russian Revolution, you know, you, know, you had an autocratic um, ruling elite in Russia um, who basically, you know, were living it up. Well, most Russians were, were ostensibly peasants. Yeah, 
So when you have that huge gap, that's what happens. And, the, you know, and I can't, you know, the, the fact that uh, people can't learn from history always, 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 you know, it astounds me. I mean, the other one about history is, of course, prohibition. Yeah, I've always said that the, the war on drugs does not work. You know, the pro alcohol prohibition in America worked. No, it didn't, did it? Proof. Anyways, um, that's beside the point. Um, talking of uh, the, 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 well, I've explained what happened with me in the Labour Party. We should explain what happened to you in the Labour Party, and the fact that I think you were victimised. Um. Do you want to explain about the fact that you made a typo, and we all make fucking typos, and you found yourself hung up to drive for it? Well, it's actually worse than the fact that I made a typo, because the, the issue is the quote that they usually uh, use about me is taken totally out of context to what the conversation was actually about. So I, I was actually referring to my own family. Now not my Russian Jewish ancestors, but my Jamaican and Portuguese Jewish ancestors who had been slave owners, slave traders, and invested in the slave trade. Now, in a way, you know, I, I, think, I think the issue is here that if they want to entrap anybody, they actually can. And if you have a look at what's happened to Jeremy Corbyn, you know, I, you know, I, I worked with Jeremy Corbyn for some time. My partner has been, I would say, a friend and comrade or was a friend and comrade of his for the last 40, 50 years. Anybody who has met him or worked with him knows there is not a racist bone in his body. No. In fact, uh, I wouldn't, support, I wouldn't support it. That, uh, you, you know me, I will call out anti-Semitism if, yeah. if I see it. I mean, so, not, not, not so my partner, you know, my partner, uh, I think, would be thought of as one of the leading uh, people on the left for the last 40 years. He's Jewish as well. You know, we're both Jewish. I mean, come on, get real here. Why do people think that so many Jews are being called anti-Semites? You know, there's been some research done and what they have realized is that Jews in the Labour Party are being suspended and expelled at something like 10 times the rate of other people. Now, if that doesn't make you ask, what on earth is happening? Does this mean that there is a significant amount of Jews who are anti-Semites does it actually mean that we got it wrong about people like Nigel Farage and Trump, who are always talking about anti-Semitism uh, now, and, you know? Or is there well, something well, more well, going on? I, 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 I was going about to say, you, you made a typo on your, your Facebook page, right? And I never thought you were anti-Semitic, right? Yeah. And the people who sort of sniffed that out, um, well, we know who it is. I'm going to mention him, Joseph Cohen, of the uh, was it the Israeli Israel advocacy? Israel advocacy. Uh, yeah. Lee. Yeah, it's well, the Israeli advocacy, advocacy movement. movement. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. There, isn't it? It's not a Jewish advocacy movement. It's a movement that advocates for Israel, and yet. If we, or anybody likes us, conflate Jews with Israel, we're told that's anti-Semitic. But here is an organization which advocates for Israel and is working in this country, pointing fingers at Jews who don't toe the line. Well, first, um... The first thing I'm going to say, I've, I've encountered Joseph, and he sort of said to me, you're LGBTQ. And I went, yeah. Well, Palestinians don't like LGBT people, oh. gay, lesbian, and trans. And I go, well, that's not, that's not the issue here. It's 
you know, control the government governance of their own fucking land is is the primary concern. You know, I certainly have an issue with um, various Islamic uh, states which you know persecute. Um, but the fear, people. the Orthodox don't like. No, I was about. I was about to say. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was get, going to get there because I remember. Donna, <laughs> I, I remember when Donna Interna uh, International won the Eurovision Song Contest, and I remember that you know because she's trans, yeah, and yeah. I remember you know the um, the 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 protest by Orthodox Jews. There's also that Channel Four program. I forgot the the um, the comedian's name. He went around all sorts of hate groups around the world. I think it's called Hate Thy Neighbor, this series. And he went to Israel where the, there was the first um, Pride March in Jerusalem, and there was an Orthodox Jewish uh, group, you know, who basically wanted to go and punch, you know, yeah. beat the shit out of these uh, people yeah. at this Pride Pride. And I mean, so. And I don't the, know about the, you, Sophia, but I know that I've met plenty of Palestinian people who are very pro-LGBTQ. I, I was gonna say, you know, because the, the one I always hear from like, you know, the Tommy Robinson supporters is, you know, Muslims, they don't like, you know, <laughs> you, you trans, tra trans people, you know, they don't like guys. Well, that's funny because there's a local calf where I live, right? Um, uh, who are run by a, a Turkish family, right? Now I know what people are gonna say, Turks aren't the most, you know, um, uh, staunch, Muslims. No, they're not. True. And neither are the Kurds. But the the point I'm, I'm, I'm going to make here is I've had nothing but utter support for me being a trans woman from them. Yeah. yeah? It has yeah. been the cis normative white working class patrons of this place who have given me more shit. I'll give you an example of this. I went to use the female toilets and some some gammon sort of complained to the oh, court use the toilet, they're a bloke. And they went, no, I'm a woman, it's my every right. So I've had, I've, I'll be honest, I've had less problems from, 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 you know, anyone who's decidedly Muslim, yeah. um, you know, for, uh, for, for being trans than I've had from white people. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, you know, there's all sorts of stereotypes that are used, aren't there? And Joseph, I think, is quite um, good. I mean, one thing that Joseph is... No, 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 Joseph, Joseph, I'll tell you what Joseph is. Okay, I'll tell you what he is. I'll, no, 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 I'll tell you what he is. He's a troll. Right? He is an internet troll. That's what he does. I I've seen so many fucking videos of his where, um, uh, for instance, there was, there, there was one video, right, where uh, he went to a pro-Palestinian uh, pro uh, protest demo. And he came across a, a Jewish group and he was speaking to this woman and uh, the, this woman um, said she was Jewish and he said, well, when was the last time you went to temple? Oh, for God's sake. And he, she said, uh, uh, you know, a while ago. And it was like, oh, unless you visit temple like five times a day, then you're not, you know, a, a proper Jew. Yet in another video, yet in another, uh, yet in another video where he was talking to someone who didn't really know a lot, he said the only thing which make uh, you know determines whether you're Jewish is if your mother's Jewish, which is true. That is what determines whether you're a Jew. It, that's you know it doesn't matter whether you're, you're circumcised, whether you eat kosher, or you you know you, you go to synagogue. That does or none of that matters. If your mother's Jewish, you're Jewish. That's it. And so he he base the thing about joseph is he goes after low hanging fruit yes yeah, that is what i've i've noticed with him yes yeah, right yeah. yeah and probably the most offensive thing he's done um you remember when was it was 2018 when the idf uh killed 50 palestinian um protesters at the gaza border yeah there was a Jewish group who decided to hold Kiddish, which is yeah. um yeah. the the Jewish outside parliament. Right? Yeah, outside parliament. Yeah. What did he do and do? They wanted to yeah, him and his and his and his Uber Zionist mates decided to, to go down there and disrupt uh the the the, the um well, they the, were the, the, the and, and I just thought I don't, 
that they, these are people who are mourning everybody on all sides of the of, of the conflict and there's nothing wrong with doing that and and, and you know and these are people who obviously obviously think that everybody's a human being but yeah. joseph goes down there and disrupts it and trolls them and it's like oh that's just a, that's just being well there is a word i could use but um it's I'm disgusting not going to. behavior. It really is quite disgusting behavior. Yeah. You know, and actually, it gives Judaism a really bad name. It gives it a really bad name. You know, when you go to a meeting and you see these, as you call them, uber Zionists, some of whom are Jewish, but not all, shouting and screaming at Holocaust survivors, you know, which is what they do because the Holocaust survivors do not support their view of what the solutions are in the Middle East. When you see them like that, that is a really good lesson. It's a um, really good lesson. The other, other, other rumor about Joseph is he gets his same, he, he, his funding comes from the same place as Tommy Robinson's funding. Oh, is, it, is, it, is it called the Middle East Forum? I, I, I'm I'm pretty sure wherever the funding is from, it's a reasonable amount because uh, you know they 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 do a slick operation, don't they? Well, we we know that the Israeli gov government have a department to basically internal affairs. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're not supposed to say that though. That was one of the things that was on my charge sheet. <sighs> We're not supposed to. Oh, is that, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that supposedly now meant to be an anti-Semitic trope? Yeah, we're not supposed to say that the Israeli secret service Mossad are in any way involved in affairs in the UK. And as a friend of mine said, you know, the bottom line is how stupid is that? If they weren't involved in American politics and British politics, they wouldn't be actually doing their job. But well, that's exactly it. We have MI6, the Americans have the CIA. Exactly. This is, what, this is what countries do. They look out for their own interests. But apparently, Israel is the only country that you cannot say, you know, even though Mossad, we know, literally have gone to other countries and assassinated people, have gone to other countries and kidnapped people, we cannot say they're involved in politics. Yeah, and, and I don't know if you remember that the, there was an assassination, I think it was in Bahrain or uh, Dubai, it was, it was over 10 years ago, and Mossad got caught and they were using British identities. Yes. I remember that. I do remember that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, this is not conspiratorial bullshit. Look, I will say there is genuinely, you know, there is, there is, there is definite genuine anti-Semitism. I mean, I'll give you an example, right? Last week, Rudolf Giuliani going, George Soros this and George Soros yeah. that. That's was that crazy? That was absolute. I listened to that and I thought, hold on, and nobody said anything. Nobody said anything about it. Yeah. David Icke, there's an anti-Semite. Alex Jones, there's another anti-Semite. Anti there, is, there is definitely, you know, a, a ton of anti-Semitism, particularly in the United States. But, um, you know, as a Labour Party member, uh, well, when I was a Labour Party member, yeah, did, you know, I had far, I, I, was, I was subjected to far more um, transphobia than I was anti-Semitism. Exactly. Now, I wanted to bring up the other thing which which led to your expulsion that video which was doctored <laughs> well, nicely edited wasn't it the secret video yes we, we should say that, when was this was it 2015 or 2016 no i think it was 2016 wasn't it at a what should have been a closed meeting of the jewish labor movement inside a closed conference and yet of course the labor party were never interested in the fact that somebody had seen the person who had videoed it and we had made a formal complaint to the Labour Party about the person videoing it because they were a member of, and on the executive of the Jewish Labour movement. Yeah, now we should, should explain that Jackie um, basically um, asked, well, you can tell them what you asked, what you said, because oh, I, I agree with you about this one. 
Which one? Which bit of what? Well, well, it was, it was, it was, it, 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 well it's, it's the, the, the Pacific bit was about um, there. I haven't be, I haven't heard a, a working definition of anti-Semitism. Yeah, I haven't heard a de in that meeting. I haven't heard a definition of of anti-Semitism that I could work with because the one that they were putting forward as the only definition, by the way, a, de a definition which is not internationally accepted. Last count, I think it was had been accepted by about 23 countries in the whole world, not internationally accepted and never constructed as a definition of anti-Semitism. You know, the person who actually wrote it keeps on saying this was not meant to be used as a coverall definition of anti-Semitism. And they kept on saying this is the only definition of anti-Semitism and why they like it is it totally, absolutely links anti-Semitism to criticism of Israel. Yeah, no, this is the International Holocaust Memorial Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism, which I have issues with. But the point I was going to make is that you weren't the only person who was asking this. No, no. You, you were just the one, they because I, I remember when I first saw this, I thought, oh, Jesus Christ, here we go again. Yeah. But then someone else who was at that meeting contacted me and said there were other people asking the same question. The same question. They were just trying to get you out, catch you out. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's why I think it's unjust. Yeah, you were they, asking the same question others were asking. Yeah, they don't Ross, the video. And the, the issue is, you see, that nobody is, and this is the bottom line, it doesn't matter about that. The media aren't interested. The Labour Party isn't interested uh, because there is one one thing that they're going to do, and that is they are going to have you as uh, their centerpiece for the witch hunt. Yeah, and, you were you were the sacrificial lamb. And, and, and now I was, you know, what happened to me? I mean, you know, I was, I think, number three person that this had happened to. The first one was the MP. What was her name again? Um, Nasha. Nasha. Then it was Ken Livingston. Then it was me. Okay. One thing I'll say about Ken Livingston, I thought he was a bit of a dick for saying it when he said it. If he'd said it two weeks later, no one would have given a shit. But it was the week before the 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 the, the, the local elections and the mayoral elections. And I also remember while he was walking up the stairs, being chased by John Mann. Siddiq Khan was walking down the stairs. Yeah, it was magic, wasn't it, how that works? I mean, whatever, and I think we could discuss that, um, what he isn't is a racist. No, I don't believe, I don't believe Ken Livingston is, is a racist. Not I, believe, I mean, look, the, the, one, the one thing which really um, seems to um, annoy, sorry, one thing that really does seem to annoy me is, for instance, Oh, do you remember back in the summer, um, Rebecca Long Bailey got sacked for um, sharing that into uh, link to that interview with um, Maxine Peak, where Maxine yeah, Peake yeah. said that the uh, the Israeli Defence Force had, had had held workshops on the tactics which which, which uh, uh, killed George Floyd. Um, Floyd, and uh, you know everyone says, oh, this is anti-Semitism or whatever else. She said she's not right. Maxine Peake is not a fucking, you know, scholar on police te techniques and who gets to, to, to teach who what, yeah? But I mean, as it goes, there is evidence to say that, yes, the IDF have held workshops with police forces across the United States on teaching them counter-terrorist uh, te uh, techniques. I so mean, the that's probably what she picked up on, okay? Can I just say on this? And I'm saying this as an anti-racist trainer. If you want to turn people into racists, what you do is every time they make any slight deviation where they misspeak something, you point at them and scream racist at them. If you want to make racists, that's what you do. If you want to have a really... Um, terroristic atmosphere that is what you do and that is what is happening now and you know there are a lot of people that i have met like you say 
not just people who are not that educated, but people who don't know very much about what's happening in Israel, what's happening in Palestine, or the history of the Jews. There's people who don't know those things, who sometimes say things which are wrong and mistaken. Does it mean that they're racist? Not necessarily, no. This was it the might problem. mean that they don't know. This was the problem. They labeled them as like racist. It's it's shockingly bad. I, this is why I, um, I had this is why I had a problem with the International Holocaust Memorial Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism because it said if you criticize the state of Israel or try to delegitimize de 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 it, that is anti-Semitism, and. I kind of thought, hold on a moment. People often use state and government as interchangeable terms. They don't understand the difference. Right? Yeah. Now, okay, I understand the legal differences. State is nationhood. Government is government, right? But, and that's the problem I had with it. I certainly do not support, you know, people being able to hate on Jews for being Jews. Can, can we make that straight, all right? Um, and I... You know, you've made that clear. I remember you went on the Daily Politics and made, made that very clear. In fact, you were talking to Joe Coburn. You, 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 do you know about Joe Coburn's Jewish? No, I didn't. And the first time I ever, one of the first times I ever experienced anti-Semitism on Twitter was someone said to me, oh, they don't like Joe Coburn. And I went, well, yeah, she is a bit of a Tory uh, propaganda mouthpiece. And I went, oh, no, she's Jewish. And I went, well, that's not a reason to hate her. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, and the other yeah. thing I was going to say is the whole anti-Semitism thing with 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 with, with Labour, okay? It didn't start under Jeremy Corbyn. No, it didn't. The first time I heard there was an issue was in February two thousand and fifteen. On the it was a report on the Sunday Politics show. There was a problem at Oxford. Uh, the, there were some some problems at, at the Ox at Labour. Um, group at Oxford, at the, the, the Oxford University, and people calling each other Zio, and they thinking that this was was uh, a euphemism for anti-Semitism. Well, first of all, let me just say this: Zionism has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. Zionism is a political ideology. It is Jewish nationalism. As I say, originally it was about the establishment of the state of Israel. It's sort of morphed into something far more fascistic now. And you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. Michael Gove is not a Jew. My Zionists right? are not Jews. Yeah. Um, Tommy Robinson identifies as a Zionist. Yeah. He's definitely not a Jew. Yeah. And I'd also, and the other, other thing which really worries me is, um, uh, there's been a change with the far right. Now, you will always have the David Dukes of the world, right? Who, and who will hate on Jews no matter what. And I mean, to be honest, David Dukes' hatred of, 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 of Jews is, is, is borderline comical. Um, just the way he goes on and on and on about how us Jews are the, the you know, the uh, responsible for all the ills in the world. And the the thing is, sorry, where was I? I've lost my train. Uh, yeah, that was it. Uh, the, 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 but there are elements of the far right now who will now support Zionism, right? And I know that you know people in Israel, you know, such as ben, Benjamin Netanyahu's um, son, um, you know, are now you know fanboys of Tommy Robinson because Tommy Robinson's all very pro-Israel. But what they don't realise is that the the reason the far right are are now Zionists, right, is for two reasons. One, because the majority of Palestinians are Muslims and they don't like them, That's Muslims. Funny. And two, the other reason uh, is that they would like us choose to fuck off and go and live in Israel, all of us. They want to create. They want. They, they want to create a Jewish ghetto. Hmm. That's why a lot of people and a lot of Jews, and certainly the majority of Jews before the war, saw Zionism itself as anti-Semitic. That's how it was seen by the majority of Jews, because the battle for Jews was was to be accepted as British, 
or as American or as wherever they live, French or whatever. And they saw Zionism as, if you like, a capitulation to anti-Semitism. Now that has changed. You know, a lot of Jews have changed their mind on it. But that's why you get so many anti-Semites like Donald Trump, for example. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing. People got to me. Well. Yeah, people got to me. How could how could Donald Trump be uh, uh, the anti-Semitic? He's the biggest supporter of Israel. And I go, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, look, part of Donald Trump's support base are the end timers. They want to rebuild the, the, the temple in Jerusalem and bring on the rapture. Oh my yeah, for anyone who, but yeah, the, the thing where this is a serious political movement is laughable, but it is, um, you know, whatever. Anyways, the, 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 the fucking end time is just do my head in. Anyways, yeah. the, the, Donald Trump, you see, his is a Ben Shapiro, right? Ben Shapiro, um, in 2016 didn't support Trump because he didn't think that Trump was going to be conservative enough. 2020, he supports Trump because he, 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 he he's, he's liked what Trump has done. And I go, hold on, Ben, you do remember the Charlottesville, don't you? You know, all, all, all the rednecks marching through, you know, Charlottesville's, you know, with the tiki torches going, the Jews will not replace us. They were all Trump supporters, yes. you moron. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but because Trump supports Israel, he, you know, that's that's okay. Get out of jail free card for all sorts of racists uh, to support Israel. It's a get out of jail free card. And, you know, whether they're in Hungary or whether they're in America, they all do it. Well, yeah, and the other thing I know that you've had is that I know that Joseph, and I've heard videos of where he's done this, has questioned your ethnicity. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jackie's Jewish, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's because you... I hate to say this, but I think because that's I'm because black. you... Sorry? It's because I'm black. Yeah. yeah. Well, haven't you heard of Sephardic Jews, Joseph? Because I'm actually a Sephardic Jew, funny enough. Well, actually, actually, what does a Jew look like? You know, we had this, didn't we, with Rachel Riley, didn't we? When she said, well, you know... It's not like I look Jewish. You know, what does a Jew look like? The thing about Jews is that they actually can look like anything. But what has happened is that there's one section of the Jewish community that has become predominant culturally in Europe, and that's the Ashkenazi. And yeah. so people generally think there is, they are the Jews. Right? The Ashkenazis. And also, of course, because it was basically the Ashkenazis who were exterminated and imprisoned during the Nazi Holocaust. But there were Jewish communities all over the world who were not touched by that, who looked very, very different to Ashkenazis. And some of them, as we know, were black Africans as well. Um, and, you know, when I went to India oh. the last time, there was, you know, there was a huge community in Cochin that had been there um, since before the 16th century. You know, almost everywhere you go, there have been Jewish communities. Yes. And do you know who that, because uh, there were various pogroms during the, uh, during, during the, um, medieval times. Um, do you know that the Jews finally back into the, into the country? Sorry? There were various pogroms during the medieval era. Yes. Um, do you know that the Jews finally back into the country? When? Yeah, it's going to surprise you. It was Oliver Cromwell. Oh, yeah. No, I did know that one. Yeah. Um, there's a funny thing about that, though. Can I just add a bit of history on that? He did that but he also, at the same time, restricted how Jews could operate in the Caribbean. Yeah, it would, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, uh, 
I hate to say this, but Oliver Cromwell did it. Uh, this is a real, real anti-Semitic trope. He he's, uh, basically was alleged to have said, uh, well, they're good for trade. Yeah. Right. Um, the, <laughs> I was going to say, so... Minefield. <laughs> it's a minefield out there. Yeah. And, History uh, is a minefield, you know, and when we... When we've got to the point, whereas now, there are things we can't talk about because apparently if we talk about certain facts, it upsets people. This brings us up to today and the attitudes in the Labour Party. When there are facts that we can't talk about, when evidence can't be used because it upsets people, when numbers can't be talked about because it upsets people, then we really are into craziness. Well, I was going to. I was going to say one of one of my most retweeted uh, tweets was when I basically said said it wasn't acceptable for Margaret Hodge to be weaponizing anti-Semitism because it actually undermines genuine anti-Semitism. Yeah. Because I, I know that people will say it's an anti-Semitic trope to say that it's been uh, anti-Semitism has been weaponized against Jeremy Corbyn, but it has been. It has been. That, that is the truth. And to say that Jeremy Corbyn hasn't acknowledged that there is a genuine problem with anti-Semitism in the Labour Party is a lie. He has. OK? Yeah, and because he's an anti-racist, yes. as you say. If you asked him if there was a problem with anti-black racism or Islamophobia yeah. or, or hatred against trans or hatred against women, he would say the same thing. There is a problem. We all know there are these problems because the Labour Party is just a reflection of the rest of society, except in terms of anti-Semitism. Sorry to bring it back to evidence, but all evidence shows there are actually fewer anti-Semites in the Labour Party than there is in the general population. Well, yesterday, Boris Johnson was lecturing uh, Keir Starmer at PMQs about Labour and anti-Semitism. Well, Boris Johnson has a history of anti-Semitism. Yeah, of course he does. He, and, believes, and he, believes, he believes in global elites and, you yeah. know, the, yeah, yeah. You know he's, he's, I think someone said it in an actual article, he, he actually quoted from the protocol, the, the protocols of the learned elders of Zion, which is, of yeah. course, is the most infamous uh, anti-Semitic diatribe there's ever been about us Jews controlling the world economy. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, and, and my response to us Jews controlling the world economy has always been, well, why is it that I'm in, you know, twenty thousand pounds worth of credit cards there? You know, um, <laughs> yeah, just it's yeah, that that one is always ridiculous. Well, you've and, obviously done something wrong, Sophia. <laughs> well, actually, someone actually, an anti-Semite once actually said to me, "Well, that's because you're not Jewish enough." Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Not Jewish enough. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah but, you, yeah, but you get people like Ben fucking Shapiro, who, who I don't know if you know his view, is, is that he would consider me a plastic Jew. Oh, I can't stand all this, all this, you're a capo, you're a self-hating Jew, all that. No, 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 it's because I'm LGBTQ. Oh, God. He hates, he does, he's a rampant transphobe. Yeah. Um, and he kind of thinks that he's the king of the Jews and he gets to arbitrate over who's a real <laughs> Jew and real not. Did you just call him the king of the Jews? Well, uh, yeah, he, he thinks he is. <gasps> oh my God. No, 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 seriously, that's his, that's his thing. You know, he, he seems to, he, he has said things like, if you vote Democrat, you're not a real Jew. If you're gay, you're not a real Jew. Yeah. He's also said in the past that Palestinians live in, in the gutter and blow yeah. shit up. That's what he yeah. has actually said. I actually can't. I actually can't bear it. I can't bear these people. I can't bear their hatred and their lack of tolerance. So if I, don't, if I don't get shit for being an anti-Semite, which I'm not, you know, I get shit from within the Jewish community. Yeah. You know, from people like Ben Shapiro and fucking Joseph Cohen. Um, so I was going to say, you, unfortunately, you were expelled from the Labour Party, unjustly, I'd add. Um, the thing is, though, <laughs> there has been a mass exodus from, from the Labour Party ever yeah. since that yeah. this time became the leader. I was prepared to give him, give him, you know, a bit of time. Um, but 
you know, when we need an opposition, we haven't got an opposition. It, it's startlingly obvious that we have no opposition at the moment. Yeah, well, there's, there's the Bill Hicks gag. Bill Hicks was this legendary stand-up comic, and he was very funny. And he made the joke many years ago. He said, you know, here's politics for you. The puppet on the left agrees with my views. The puppet on the <laughs> right agrees with my views. Um, uh, oh, wait, there's one puppet master. Um, oh, I know. Let's give the people uh, beer and cable TV so they don't notice. You know, yeah. that, that's... Yeah. That, that, the, the, thing, the thing is, for the last 40 years, we've had a, conser we've had a conservative government. Yes, for third, you know, we've had blue Tory and red Tory. Yeah, yeah. The Labour, the Labour, what the Labour Party are now are just the, 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 the are, are just the red Tory wing of the of the Tory Party. Yeah, that's right. And and uh, here's a, and Keir Starmer will never be Prime Minister. I can I, I I can absolutely assure you of that. He will never be Prime Minister. Not just because of the electoral mathematics he he, he would uh, have to overcome to become leader. Um, but also, um, he doesn't have any fucking policies. Well, I think he's made a calculation that that's the best way to become prime minister is to have no policies. Yeah, but the, here's, uh, this actually has affected me, right, as a trans person, right? So back in the summer, we had J.K. Rowling and her, oh. you know, diatribe. Yeah. Right? And at the time, you know, trans issues were in the news. So they asked Keir Starmer, and Keir Starmer sat on the fence. Yeah. And then he suspends, he suspends Jeremy, uh, he removes the whip from, um, from, from Jeremy Corbyn in Parliament, mm. yet he won't do the same for Rosie Duffield, who has said all manner of transphobic shit. Yeah. Well, she's he's a definitely. hypocrite, and he's a hypocrite on that, on, on that score. Yeah. You know, he 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 says he wants to he wants to root out anti-Semitism. I just think that anti-Semitism is a euphemism for him um, for for socialist. Yes, it is. And yeah, you know, I have to ask you: Do you think Labour are in danger of splitting now? Yes, but not as much as most people think. And I can tell you my reasons why I think that. Go on. I think I think. Uh, to actually, I, I think we're, you know, if, if there are 10 steps towards splitting, we might well be on number one or number two. But if you look at the socialist group of MPs, and if you look at what's happening with the trades unions, uh, you know, they would need to get a lot more militant before anything really happened. I do think, however, we are closer than we were six months ago. I first signal I saw that was Unite reduced the amount of money it's giving to the Labour Party. It's obvious Lemma Classic is not happy. Um, but I'm hearing, I mean, for instance, Richard Bergen and, and you know, even Clive Lewis, you know, you, you, uh, people have this image of Clive being quite wimpish. Um, but he's not. Even he has, has said that Jeremy Corbyn is, is, is you, you know, that, you know, he's being set upon by, you know, factional fighting. You know, that was the other thing that Corbyn said, you know, that anti-Semitism really used as, as, as a talk of factional fighting. Well, yeah, it has been. It, 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 that's the truth. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not anti-Semitic to say that. That, that, that is, a, that, that, that's been the, uh, the, the case. It is absolutely obvious, you know, and, that it has been used for factional um, advancement. And if you're in the Labour Party, you say that you'll get thrown out of the Labour Party. But that doesn't make it less true, I'm afraid. Yeah, he was yeah. just, look, he, Jeremy Corbyn in his original statement in response to the uh, uh, Equalities and Human Rights Commission uh, 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 findings of uh, uh, anti-Semitism and la the Labour Party investigation. Um, you know, he was just speaking the truth. I'm talking about the e -R -A -E -H -R -C. I should ask you, yesterday they um, also um, published their findings about uh, Theresa May and the Home Office and, and the Windwash. 
it's funny how I didn't hear the same self-righteous indignation. Oh, it's, I, I tell you that it was worse than that. Richard Burgeon was being uh, interviewed on the TV about this. And he said whatever he said about the Windrush. And the question that came back to him was on anti-Semitism. That, that's actually what happened. I saw it, yeah. But the whole issue of the EHRC is just being so corrupt and corrupted in terms of not just the fact that, you know, if you want to find out about the EHRC, for example, have a look at the executives, look at their backgrounds, ask why there's nobody of Caribbean descent, one of the largest minorities in the country, doesn't have anyone of Caribbean descent on its executive. It doesn't have any Romani representative, even though they are probably at the bottom of the uh, any hierarchy of, uh, of power in this country. And then look at the political interference with the EHRC as an organization and the history of it. But even without that, have a look at the report. And I bet you most people have not read the report. I've read it. I've read it a couple of times and I've read it because even though I'm not named in it, they talk about me in it. And you, are of, to, 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 you are of the Windrush generation, aren't you? Yes. And one thing they talk about in the EHRC report on the, uh, on the Labour Party, they talk about me and a, a number of other people as examples of the way the, the disciplinary process within the Labour Party was unjust. Nobody has reported on that. And, you know, just to take out a couple of things in the EHRC report that very few people have cottoned on to, the report has not provided any evidence because there is none that there is any institutional racism against Jews in the Labour Party. And I guarantee you, if any, if any organisation investigated the Labour Party and looked to find evidence of institutional racism against Muslims or people of colour, it would be found. Uh, the other thing is, the report, for example, does not show, and not even one example, where a Jewish person was disadvantaged in any way or suffered discrimination in any way. Now, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that if that same exercise had been done with Muslims or with Romani or people of colour, they would have found not one, not 10, but hundreds of examples. And what you have to understand is just like the, the fact, just as in the times of, of McCarthyism, the EHRC report will be seen as another McCarthyite strategy. That's what it is. That doesn't mean all of the findings of the report were rubbish, but Many of them had little foundations, and certainly it's been really poorly reported. I should also have, I'm sorry, I forgot to bring this up earlier. One of the reasons I think it was really unjust that you, was, you were expelled um, was that, and not another member was, 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 was expelled, and I think you know I'm going with this, is that I forgot her surname, but I remember her first name was Rosa, threatened you on camera. We yeah. violence. Ella Rose. Ella, that's it. Ella, Ella Rose. She, she, was, she was the chair of the Jewish labour movement when she threatened me with physical assault. It was an undercover. She was, she was filmed covertly doing it. One of the reasons the Labour Party said, by the way, that she wasn't disciplined, she wasn't suspended, was because the filming was covert. I want you to remember that I was filmed covertly. So, uh, it's one rule for them and another rule for us. Ella Rose has now gone on and she's now working, I think, as the education officer for the Holocaust, Memor for Holocaust Memorial Day. And her first job getting out of, <laughs> getting out of university was 
Yes, you heard it here with the Israeli embassy. So there you have it. And we're not being anti-Semitic. This is all on camera. There, there was a Al Jazeera document documentary. Yeah. Um, but I do remember. I do remember there was there is a guy who sort of semi stalks you. Um, I think his first name is Jonathan. Um, it sort of has a voice like that. Um, and there's a couple of videos. Um, and I remember uh, he he keeps turning up to meetings and trying to to give you um, a hard time. You know, yeah, he thinks he's yeah, got, yeah. got you. And every yeah. time you, you come back at him and. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I've got kind of quite strangely and weirdly fond of him because he's such a buffoon. And in fact, he he did this thing when I was work, doing some work um, and I did a paper. At, uh, I was doing a paper at one of the London universities and he came and he spoke and filmed it. And he thought he was being really, really clever. And I actually took the film that he had taken of me and I tweeted it out and when I then looked the last time about half a million people had actually seen it because he had made such an absolute fool of himself um, basically quest questioning my Jewish identity he had made such a fool of himself. Which is racist in itself. Yeah. That, is, that, that, that is racist. And anyway, finally come on to the US elections because you are you have dual citizenship. I, have I voted. Yeah, you had a vote. You voted for Trump. Trump. <laughs> Trump. <laughs> yeah. Do I look like a Trump supporter? <laughs> Don't answer that, Sophia. Do not answer that. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I do remember when on your Facebook page because I remember I, I did. I've had I've had a, uh, a discussion with you about this. You, you posted up uh, when it was announced that he he had finally. Crossed the threshold, uh, Biden had finally crossed the threshold of electoral votes to, to, to become president. Um, you po posted up um, new boss, same as the old boss, and I, I do, I do think, I do thinking, I, I sympathise to a certain degree because I kind of feel the one thing you're not going to get from Joe Biden is economic justice, but when it comes to LGBTQ people, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's, you know, if, 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 if Trump had been re-elected, we were looking at LGBTQ people having to wear pink triangles in public. So when we had this discussion, Sophia, one thing I said to you, and I'm going to say this again, you know, I, I think we should be very careful about thinking that politics is about individual people. Yeah. Now, I think what I believe what happened, and of course, you know, I've got a Marxist interpretation of how things work, in that I look for material causes and I look for the forces behind the people. Um, I think it suited those in power to have somebody like Trump in power for a time. Because what that has done is totally shifted the politics to the, the Overton point. window, yeah. So now we get Biden, who, by the way, Biden is not on the left. I know, I know. Biden uh, here, he would be like, maybe he'd be on the left or the center of the Tory party, but he is no way is this person on the left. But after Trump, everyone's going, oh my God, thank God we've got Biden. You know, yeah, but I, I, can I, can I, 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 this is where I slightly disagree with you. And look, it was, it was Hobson's choice. No, it was either Biden or it was a fascist, yes, right? right? And I'm always, that's the problem. I'm, 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 that's, I'm, sorry, can I just say that is the problem with our democracy, both yeah. American and British democracy now, is that actually what's happening is that the so-called choices we're being given in our democracies are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. At the same rate that the, the gap between rich and poor is widening, our democratic choices are shortening. So what we're going to end up with in England is the difference between the Labour Party and the Tory Party really 
is not going to be very much exactly what's happened in America. But every time they want to shove it over to the right a bit, they'll get some, some Trumpian figure in and that will move the whole of the politics to the right. And that move to politics on the right didn't just have an effect on America, it had an effect on British politics as well. You look at the savagery and the racism with which our home office now works, it's open racism. And nobody is objecting to that. You know, that's because the whole of politics in the last few years has not been shifted to the left, this is a shift to the right. Well, it's a consistent shift to the right. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I, 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 I as I've said, Biden is not going to deliver economic justice, right? So if you are a trans woman of colour living in a trailer park in Alabama, yes, you'll get equal rights, but will you get, you know, the, the financial support to be able to exercise those you won't get equal rights. You won't get equal rights because you'll be poor and yeah, you'll be exactly. black and yeah. you won't get equal rights. I'll tell you what you won't get. You won't get somebody who's the president calling you names. That's what you won't get. Right? Yeah. You might not get I, I know it sounds I know it sounds I know it sounds ridiculous, right? But the thing is, Biden mentioning trans people in his victory speech actually is a really big leap forward because he's normalizing trans people it's now something it's, which like is mentioned in the it's like what blair did with gay marriage isn't it yeah it, it's that kind of liberal cover yeah, 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 and I, look as I, as I said, I, I, you know, you know, e, uh, social justice has to come with economic justice. You can't have one without the other. That's right. But I am relieved that. Um, I, and I'm relieved it's not Trump. But if anybody thinks that what we've seen is an actual shift in power, then they're mistaken. Well, I, 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 I remember back in 2016 the argument I had with with. Uh, the Democrats was, I said after the election that um, if Hillary, if Sir Bernie Saunders had been the no, uh, nomination, he would have won. And they went, no, he wouldn't have. And I went, yes, he would. Essentially, you've got a lot of people down on their luck in the Rust Belt, right? And they, you know, them voting for Trump was them lashing out. That's right. And. Is what you needed was someone to go in there who has some understanding of 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 you, you know the, the the needs of the working classes, um, and offer them hope, and that's exactly what Bernie Saunders would have done. What you're going to have now, I, I'll tell you what you're going to have at the end of a Biden presidency if he lives long enough to get through it. Because, you know, we well, have... I, think, I actually think Kamala Harris is going to take over. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't matter who it is. Because just because Kamala is a black woman, you know, Kamala Harris imprisoned more black people in her time than any other person in her position. So we need to stop this ridiculous, superficial identity politics stuff. What matters is somebody's politics. That is what is crucial. You know, you had blacks for Trump, for goodness sake, praying for him to get back in. Did it matter that they were black? Did that make it better? No, it didn't. I don't care what color, what race, what gender a person is. What I care about, if you like, is what's in their soul, what's in their politics. That's what makes somebody a good or bad person. Yeah. All right, well, one final question for you and it might sound irrelevant but this is sort of the cultural war stuff we were having to fight at the moment obviously you're a black person who has dreads do you think that white people having dreads is a cultural appropriation no i don't care see and that, that, that that's what i expected you to say <laughs> yeah? see that, that this is this is something that you hear for the far right about 
uh, you know, oh, oh, you know, all those uh, unwashed people with, with uh, you know, uh, uh, dreads, the, uh, white people with dreads, you know, trying to be hipsters, you know, they're, they're, they're culturally appropriating. No. It doesn't matter. It's a hairstyle. Yeah, exactly. Hairstyle, and for some people, it's more than a hairstyle. But, you know, you could be asking me, do I care that black women straighten their hair? Well, I think it's a shame that some, you know, particularly... 20, 30 years ago, you know, most black women felt that they couldn't have natural hair. And I think that's a shame because I think black hair can be really beautiful. But am I going to be particularly bothered about it? No, I'm just not. There are more important things. Thank you, Jackie. Anyway, so thank you for joining. We've had a lovely conversation. You're welcome. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, I'll say goodbye to you afterwards. So I'll just yeah, yeah. Say goodbye to people on 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 tape now. Okay. Um, thank you for for joining us. Um, please like and subscribe. Um, oh yes, uh, where's the best place for people to find you? Oh, on Facebook or on Twitter. Oh, by the way, before uh, the part I mentioned this on tape, you don't follow me on Twitter, by the way. <gasps> And you're never oh. going to guess who, who has started following me. It's somebody who was in your... Uh, oh, yeah, I should also... Sorry. We, uh, there is a documentary um, Jackie made with, with, with friends um, about all the stuff she's had to put up with. Oh, yeah. In regards to the Labour Party. It's called uh, The Witch Hunt. Um, I will link it in the, in, in down below. Good with, idea. With, Good idea. With with all my with all the social media links for us us too. Yeah. Good anyway, so I was just just about to say it's somebody somebody who's featured in this film, Mark Chadwick. He's now following me on Twitter. He's the <laughs> lead singer of the, the the Levelers. I know who he is. I I I've met him and spoken to him a number of times. He's a big big supporter. Cool. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, the levelers are, 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 you know, they don't, they don't just make love uh, great music, but they, they're also, you know, very principled. They're know, wonderful. The levelers. People. Yeah. The levelers. All, right. All right. We'll see you, everybody. Take care. Bye. Your leagues for us, us too. Yeah. Anyways, I was just, just about to say, it's somebody, somebody who's featured in this film, Mark Chadwick. He's now following me on Twitter. He's the <laughs> lead singer of the, the, the Levelers. I know who he is. I, I, I've met him and spoken to him a number of times. He's a big, big supporter. Cool. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, the Levelers are, 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 you know, they don't, they don't just make love uh, great music, but they, they're also, you know, very principled. You they're know, wonderful. The Levelers. People. Yeah. The Levelers. All, right. All right. We'll see you, everybody. Take care. Bye.